Hello everyone. This video is about gradient. The term gradient generally refers to the rate of change or slope of a function with respect to its variables. In the context of neural networks, the gradient is used to measure how much the loss function changes with respect to changes in the model's parameters, for instance, weights and biases. But in general, gradient refers to any gradual change or transition. For example, a color gradient describes a smooth change from one color to another. So in this video, we are going to learn how can we calculate gradients and what does it actually mean? So for instance, the first exercise, let us assume that we have two variables x and w and we are doing a linear operation here. And after the linear operation, the output is z is equal to w into x. So 3 into 2, we will get 6 as the output. And let's suppose that we will update the value of w in the next step. So this w will become 3.1 in the next step. So the difference in the weight will be this w minus this w, which will be dw. So the difference in w or dw, we can say it is 0 0.1. And now if we again do the linear operation, so 3.1 into 2 will be 6.2. So the updated z will be 6.2. So the previous z is 6 and the updated z is 6.2. So dz will be 0 0.2. And now if we put the value of dz here, which is 0 0.2, and we divide dz by dw, that equals to 0.2 divided by 0 0.1 will give us 2. And we can see that it is the value of x. So what does this dz by dw means? So dz by dw typically denotes the rate of change of the variable z with respect to the variable w. So in our case, dz by dw is 2. This means that the variable z is increasing at a constant rate of 2 units per unit of w. Now the next exercise. It is similar to the previous exercise. So let's calculate the value of dz here. So z was 9 when the w was 3. And now this z becomes 9.3 as our w is updated to 3.1. So if we do this z minus this z, we will get 0 0.3. So we put the value of dz here, which is 0 0.3, and we divide 0 0.3 by 0 0.1, we will get 3 here. You can see that we are getting x here. Next exercise, we have to find out the value of z. So how do we do that? 3 into 2.1 will give us 6.3. So as we are getting 6.3, so we should calculate the dz. So 6.3 minus 6 will give us 0.3. So we will put 0.3 here and dz by dw will give us 3, which is the value of x here. So again, you can see that this dz by dw means that we will have an increase of 2 units for this value of z for the change of per unit of w. Next exercise, again, we have to find out this z. So we are doing the linear operation w into x. So 4 into 2.1 will give us 8.4. So if we do this 8.4 minus 8, we will get 0.4. So dz is 0.4. And if we do this dz by dw, 0.4 by 0.1 will give us simply 4, which is the value of x here. Next exercise, we should find out the value of x here. So how do we do that? We can simply reverse calculate from here. So 0 0.6 by 0 0.1, how we are getting these values. So W is changed from 2 to 2.1. So the DW's value is 0 0.1. So DW is 0 0.1. And in case of Z, we know the value of DZ is 0 0.6. So 0 0.6 by 0 0.1 will give us 6. That means the value of X will be 6. So if we know the rate of change, in the values of w and z, we can simply calculate the value of the variable x here. Next exercise, again, we have the value of x. Also, we know the dw, so we have to find out the dz. So 9 into 2 will be 18 here, and then 9 into 2.1 will be 18.9 here. So we can simply find out that the dz's value will be 0.9. And if we put the value of dz here, so 0.9, divided by 0 0.1 will give us 9, which is the value of x. Again, we can see that if we have the value of dw and x here, we can simply calculate the value of dz from this exercise. 
Next exercise, the value of dW is given, which is minus 0.1. So we are doing a decrease here. In the previous examples, we were increasing the values. Now we are decreasing the value of W. So Z changes to 5.8 from 6. So 5.8 minus 6 will give us minus 0.2. So the value of dz is minus 0.2. So let's put the value here and we will get the value of dz by dw, which is our value of x. So if we do the dz by dw, we will get 2 here, which is the x value here. Again, 3 is becoming to 3.2. So the dw is 0.2. And the output Z is changing from 6 to 6.4. So the value of DZ will be 0.4. So let's put the value of DZ here. So 0.4 by 0.2 will give us simply 2, which is the value of X here. So again, you can see that if you have the value of DW and DZ, that means the rate of change for the variable W and Z, then we can simply calculate the value of X here. Next exercise, again, we have to calculate the value of dz. So 6 becomes 10. So that, that means this z from dz will give us 4. So dz by dw will be 4 by this 2. So 4 by 2 will give us 2 and the value of x is 2. Next, x is becoming from 2 to 2.1. So the value of dx is 0.1. Now we have to calculate the value of dz. So we have to do 6.3 minus 6, which will give us 0.3. So dz by dx will be 0.3 by 0.1. That will give us 3. And now you can see that we are having the value of w. So what is the difference here? In the previous examples, we were doing dz by dw. And we were getting the value x from there. But now we are doing dz by dx, which actually gives us the value of w here. So if you have the rate of change for the two variables from this equation, you can calculate the third value, which stays constant in this example. So if you have the rate of changes for any of the two variables from this equation, you can calculate the third constant value from here. Next exercise again, this x is changing and this z is changing. So 3 into 3, 9. So from 6 to 9, we will get the dz as 3. So we simply put the value of dz as 3 here. So you can see that dz by dx will give us the third variable, which is constant in these two cases, which is 3. Next exercise again, this x is changing from 2 to 2.1. So dx is 0.1. And Z is changing from 2 into 4, which is 8, and then 4 into 2.1, which is 8.4. So 8 becomes 8.4. So DZ will be 0.4. So if we put the value of DZ here, DZ by DX will be giving us 4, which is the value of weight here. So you can simply interpret that DZ by DX is denoting the rate of change of the variable Z with respect to the variable of X. So in this case, we are having dz by dx is equal to 4. This means that the variable z is increasing at a constant rate of 4 units per unit of this x. Next exercise, again, x is changing from 2 to 0. So the dx will be 0 minus 2 is minus 2. And in case of z, we are getting the first z, 4 into 2, which is 8, and then 0 into 4, which is 0. So the dz will be 0 minus 8, which is minus 8. So we put the value of dz here, which is minus 8, and minus 8 by minus 2 will give us the value of w, which is constant in both cases, and it is 4. Now this exercise, we are having a small change again. So in the previous exercises, we only had z, which is the output. But in this case, we have another variable, which is a, and it means that we have to apply ReLU on Z and the final output will be A. So we will also have an output change in this variable A. Let's calculate the values here. If we apply ReLU on this Z, as it is a positive value, we will get 6 from this Z. And as this is also a positive value 6.2, so ReLU will also return us 6.2. So the change in this variable A will be from this A we have to minus this a. So 6.2 minus 6 will give us 0.2. So the value of dA will be 0.2.
Now, this exercise, we have to again find out the change in the variable a, which is dA. So, in the second step, the value of a is 6.2 and in the previous step, the value of a is 6. So, dA will be 0.2. So, if we put the value of dA here, which is 0.2, so dA by dz will give us simply 1. So, this dA by dz typically denotes the rate of change of the variable a with respect to the variable z. And this dA by dz equal to 1 means that the variable a is increasing at a constant rate of 1 unit per unit of z. Next exercise, we have to calculate the value of a here. So, the value of z is minus 6.2 here and as we are getting a negative value, we know that ReLU will return us 0. So, the value of a will be 0. So, in this step, the value of a is 0 and in this step, the value of a is also 0. So, there is no change in the value of a. So, we will get dA as 0 here. Again, in this step, a's value is 0. In this step, the value of a is also 0. So, dA will be 0 here. If we put the value of dA as 0, we will get dA by dz as 0. So, that means that there will be no change of the variable a with respect to the variable of z here. Next exercise, the value of a is 12 and the updated value of a is 12.4. So, the change that means dA's value will be 0.4. So we simply put dA as 0.4 and if we do dA by dz, we will get 1. So that means that if we change dz to 1 unit, A will be changing to 1 unit also. Next exercise, we have to calculate the value of A here. So the value of A will be 15 as we are getting a positive value here and here 15.5. So it will be 15.5 for A also. So dA will be 0.5. So now if we put the value of dA as 0.5 here, we will get 0.5 by 0.5, which is 1. So if we increase z by 1 unit, a will be increasing by 1 unit also. Next exercise, we are getting z equal to 27 from here. So a will be 27 as we are having a positive value. And here the z's value should be calculated. So 9 into 3.1 will be 27. Point Nine. So here, ReLU will return also 27.9. So the rate of change in Z, which is DZ, will be DZ to DZ, which is 0.9. And A is 27 at the previous step. And in this step, A is 27.9. D and DZ here, so 0.9 divided by 0.9 will give us 1 here. Next exercise. We are having minus 3 as z here. So ReLU will return as 0. So the value of a will be 0. And then we should calculate the value of z here. So 3.1 into minus 1 will give us minus 3.1. So ReLU will return 0 here. So the value of dz will be minus 3.1 minus minus 3, which will be minus 0.1. And the change in this variable a will be 0. So dA will be 0. So now if we do the dA by dz, we will get 0 by minus 0.1, which will give us 0 here. Next exercise, it is getting a bit more complex. So the value of dz will be 12.4 minus 12, which is 0.4. So we will get 0.4 here. The value of dA is 0.4 also. So now if we do the dA by dz, which is 0.4 by 0.4, we will get 1. That means that if we change the value of z1 unit, the variable a will be changing one unit also. And if we do the dz by dw, so the dw is given here, which is 0.1. So dw is 0.1 and the value of dz is 0.4. So if we do the 0.4 by 0.1, we will get 4, which is the value of x. As from the previous examples, we have seen that in the operation was z is equal to w into x. So if we know the change for any of the two variables, we can get the constant value of the third variable from here, which is x in this case. Now the value of dA is 0.4 and dW is 0.1. So if we do the dA by dW, we will get 4 here. Next exercise, we have to first calculate the value of dA. So a in the previous step is 0, in the updated step it is 0. So dA will be 0. So dA by dz will give us 0. And then dz by dw, so dz is minus 0.2 and dw is 0.1. So 0.1, so 
this will give us minus 2, which is the constant third variable in our case, and it is x. So we can get the value of x from here, and the value of dA is 0. So dA by dW will give us 0 here. Next exercise, again, the value of dz we should calculate. So z is 12 here and 12.3 here. So dz will be 0.3. So let's put the value of dz here. So 0.3. So dA by dz will give us 1. So if we change the value of z one unit, the value of a will change one unit. And dz by dx, so dz is 0.3 in our case. So dz by dx will give us 3, which is the constant third variable or w in our case here and dA is 0.3 and dx is 0.1. So if we calculate dA by dx, we will get three here. That means that if we change the value of x to one unit, the value of A will increase to three units. And the last exercise, we have to calculate the value of dA at first. So A's value is zero in the first case and in the updated case, it is also zero. So the change will be zero here. So dA is zero. So if we do dA by dz, we will get zero by minus 0.2 and it will give us zero. Now we have to do dz by dx. So dz is minus 0.2 and dx is given here, which is 0.1. So it will be minus to after the division. So that means that if we change the value of x to one unit, the value of z will be de decreasing to two units. And this minus two is the constant third variable in our case, which is w. And at last, this dA by dx, we can calculate this. So dA will be zero and dx is 0 0.1. So zero by 0 0.1 will give us zero. And again, this means that if we change the value of x to one unit, the value of a will be remaining unchanged. So this was the last exercise for us. And I hope you found this video helpful in understanding how gradients work and how to calculate the gradients. Thank you.